god, my eyes are like barely opening and I need sleep desperately, but I have a meeting with my tutor um, in like 10 minutes, so I have to run to the college and meet with her. It's like a prelim the preliminary meeting before classes start. Um, and then after that, I'm hoping that I can come back here and take a big fat nap. So I took a solo trip to Paris last month and while I was there I was just so self-conscious of my pronunciation and a lot of the time I just did not even try at all. Um, can I get the this one? Uh -huh. And the this one? Yeah. Thank you. I see. And while I would love to go back to France soon, I want to have at least some basic knowledge of French before I go back, and that's why I've started taking classes on Lingoda. Lingoda is an online language school that provides live online classes taught by native level teachers. What I like is that their classes really emphasize human interaction and conversations, so each class has only a maximum of five students, so you get a lot of personalized attention and personalized feedback from the teachers. I feel like when it comes to language learning, the hardest part is actually applying like the textbook version that you learn to real life conversations because a lot of the times like how native people speak the language is completely different from how you learn it in a textbook. So that's why conversation practice is super important. So Lingoda offers English, German, French, and Spanish, and if you're feeling super ambitious, you can take part in the Lingoda Sprint Challenge. The Super Sprint Challenge is when you take 30 lessons per month for two months, and you get 100% cash back if you attend all the lessons. So I highly recommend Lingoda if you're looking to stay motivated while learning a language. Click the link in my description box if you want to learn more about Lingoda, and you can also use my code WINWITHJING for 20 euros off of your deposit. So I was really stressing out about this essay, which is due tomorrow, and then suddenly I had a thought, and I feel like I need to vocalize it because I don't know how common this thought is, but basically, like, do you ever just, like, do work, and then you stop and think, no one is, like, forcing me to do this. Like, I could just, I could just not do this. I could just not be working right now, and it would not be the end of the world, but I just don't know why it feels like the end of the world, and it just feels like if I don't, finish this assignment exactly how I want it to, like, it's gonna be the end of the world. And I, I don't know how, it's very unhealthy, and I don't know how to stop thinking like that. So yeah, that's my little mentally unstable rant of the night, and then now I will get back to stressing over my essay. <laughs> Thank you.
Food isn't fooding like I was expecting it to. This year was my first Lunar New Year away from my family. To put it into perspective for those who may not celebrate, it's kind of like the equivalent to not being home for the holidays. My love for Lunar New Year has grown with every passing year as I excavate more and more of my cultural identity, which I had once pushed deep down in hopes of being more quote unquote American. I love the way that we celebrate New Year. Superstitions, the color red, a feast complete with symbolic food, Once, an Uber driver in London told me that, quote, Chinese people do not love love. As strange and kind of rude that statement was, given the context, I couldn't help but see a slight truth to it. Compared to the suburban American families I saw in sitcoms, my family was much more unsentimental, rational, and put reason over emotion. But I think now that our pragmatism was out of necessity, we had to adopt this no-nonsense mindset in order to make it in this foreign country. In reality, we display our love in ways that far exceed rationality. In the way my mom yells at me to not wash my hair on New Year's or else I'll wash away all my good luck. In the way the dinner table practically turns into a boxing ring when relatives fight for the bill. Even though I'm not with my family this year, I feel that same sense of love from the people here. The home-cooked meal from a family who welcomed us into their home knowing that food is the way to a college student's heart. 
the box of lychee and shrimp that they then said we couldn't leave the house without accepting. The red envelope my tutor gave me with chocolate inside. The whole steamed fish my college served each of us because it signifies prosperity. The Chinese songs I grew up listening to only in the comfort of my home and never imagined would be belted by a chorus of voices at a college party. The friends who patiently taught me how to play mahjong for the first time. I can't believe that there was once even a teensy part of me that was not utterly proud to inherit this type of love.